Everybody does it. No one is immune. What are some irresponsible things that you do that cost your family a fortune every year? Can you think of any? Yeah, it's true. We all waste a lot of money every year. Welcome, Ryan here with FBF, Florida Boy Finance. Thanks for tuning into the channel and to this video. Let's talk about irresponsible things adults do with money. We all do them. Some people do them more than others. But first, let's roll that necessary subscribe video. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so that you can be notified every time a new video posts. Over 70% of the people who watch my videos aren't subscribed. Why not? It's easy and free. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Florida Boy Finance, and like my Facebook page, also called Florida Boy Finance, for behind the scenes footage and sneak peeks at my newest videos. Don't forget to smash that like button. Okay, without further ado, and in no particular order, here are the 14 irresponsible things adults waste money on that cost a fortune every year. Number one, buying brand name items. Do you really need brand name items? I mean, anything from medications to groceries to clothes, it's not really necessary. And it's not like they're any better quality or better for you. Do you know that on average, generic foods are 30% cheaper than their brand counterparts and generic medications can be up to 95% cheaper? That's a lot of money. You can waste a lot of money on your grocery bill by only buying brand name items. By switching to generic foods, you can reduce your grocery bill by as much as 30%. If you spend $500 per month for groceries, and instead of buying brand name items, you buy generic, you'll save roughly 20% a month on the low end. That would save you $100 per month or $1,200 per year by buying generic instead of brand name items. Number two, paying someone to do something that you are able to do yourself. Things like changing your car oil, cutting your grass, fertilizing your lawn, and other small items around the house. Doing these things yourself can save a lot of money every year. Let's look at one thing. Let's take lawn care, for instance. The national average cost for lawn care is $90 per month for bi-weekly lawn care. That's $1,080 per year that you pay for lawn care. Then, if you fertilize your yard yourself, that saves you another $450 on service minus what you would pay for the fertilizer. By taking care of your yard yourself, that saves you around $1,500 per year. So far, by buying generic instead of brand and taking care of your yard yourself, you can save around $2,700 per year. But wait, there's more. Number three, paying for cable TV. I recently did a video on how much I have saved by getting rid of cable and going to an online TV provider. Check out the video. In the video, I talk about how I'll save an average of around $90 per month or a little over $1,000 per year just by switching to an online cable provider. I still have the same channels and really got a faster internet speed. Online TV is the way to go. It's far cheaper and there's no contract and the rates don't increase every year. So far, the total save between the first three items is $3,700 a year. Number four is paying bank overdraft fees. I hesitate to put this on here, but there are lots of Americans paying tons of money every year in overdraft fees. The average overdraft fee is $24.38 per item. In 2020, Americans paid $12.4 billion in overdraft fees. I'd say it's a pretty big problem and a huge waste of money. Don't do it. It's easy to avoid. All you have to do is spend less than you make. Even one overdraft fee per month will cost you almost $300 a year. Adding that savings to our list, 
We're at $4,000 per year in savings. Number five, paying full price for items. Don't ever do it. It's such a waste of money. There really is no reason to do this with anything. Whether it be clothes, cars, groceries, electronics, or other items, always get stuff on sale. It might make you feel cheap, but it can really save you tons of money in the long run. Just imagine if you could save an average of 10% on everything you buy. Seems low, but it really adds up. I can't put a solid number on this savings, so I won't try. But know that buying everything on sale can save a substantial amount of money over the long term. Our total savings is still at $4,000 for the year, but has the potential to be much higher if you choose to buy everything on sale. Number six, paying for monthly subscription services that you don't use. Yeah, it really happens. These can ruin your budget. There are lots of Americans that are wasting around $350 per month in subscription services they are not using, with 84% of the people being unaware of how much they are spending each month on these subscription services. Find out what you are spending and cancel them. It's that easy. According to Yahoo Finance, that can save you around $350 per year. Our total is now up to $4,350. Number seven, buying energy drinks. Okay, I know what some of you are thinking. You have no idea what it's like to work, fill in the blank hours, or work all night, or work with no sleep. I need my energy drinks. Well, I hate to burst your bubble, but I know exactly what it's like to work long hours with no sleep. I work 24-hour shifts in emergency medical services as a flight nurse. I know exactly what it's like to be awake for 24 hours straight or to try and take care of a dying patient while I have worked all day in the heat of Florida and flown all night. Besides, most energy drinks are also terrible for you, can lead to health problems, and at $2 per can can get very expensive to purchase. I know people that will drink two to three cans a day. At two cans per day, multiplied by 365 days a year, that has the potential to cost you $1,460 per year just in energy drinks. That's a lot of wasted money on something that is pretty terrible for you. By cutting out brand name items, doing the yard yourself, switching to an online cable provider, avoiding bank overdraft fees, buying things on sale, canceling subscription services you don't use, and cutting out energy drinks, that brings a total savings of $5,810 per year so far. And we are only halfway done. That leads us to number eight, buying coffee at coffee shops. Just don't do it. This is a pet peeve of one of my favorite YouTubers. He's a multimillionaire that refuses to pay for coffee at coffee shops. Anyone guess who it is? Well, regardless of what your opinion is on the cost of coffee, the research doesn't lie. According to the investment app Acorns, they found that more than 45% of 18 to 23 year olds have spent more money on coffee than investing in their retirement, and 35% of 24 to 35 year olds have done the same. I think it's safe to say that regardless of wage inequality, inflation, the rising cost of housing, and the skyrocketing cost of education, spending more money on coffee than you do on retirement is ridiculous. I mean, he's not wrong. Any person, millennial or otherwise, that would pay more for coffee than invest in retirement is not financially responsible. But I digress. Spending $3 a day on a cup of coffee will cost you $1,095 per year. In coffee! Our total now is up to $7,997. Almost $8,000. That leads us to number nine, paying for out-of-state college tuition. Out-of-state college tuition is much more expensive than in-state tuition. According to the national average, you are going to pay more than double for your schooling by going to an out-of-state college. Why do it? Every state has wonderful universities in-state. Just attend those. I won't include the savings in the overall numbers since most people aren't wasting money on out-of-state tuition. But nonetheless, don't waste money going to college out-of-state. We're still at $7,997. Number 10, eating out at restaurants. Now, don't misconstrue this. I am not advocating for not eating out. On the contrary, I love eating out. It's probably something I spend more money on than I should. 
But I am a foodie. I love trying new restaurants and going to food trucks. What I am advocating for in this is being wise when you eat out. Not just for money purposes, but for health purposes as well. Restaurants are serving bigger and bigger portions and the prices are going up as well. You don't really need that much food and it's not the best for your health either. My wife and I tend to either get an appetizer and split a dinner portion, or if we get our own dinners, we'll have leftovers that I'll take to work to eat. By splitting a dinner and getting an appetizer, we will save anywhere from $5 to $20 or more, depending on the restaurant. Let's say we saved an average of $10 per week doing this. That would be $520 per year. Adding that to our previous total would equal $8,517 so far. For those keeping track, we still have four more categories left. Number 11, buying a new or expensive car. This is a huge waste of money. It's not necessary to buy a $50,000 or more car. There's nothing, practically speaking, that a $50,000 car can do that a $25,000 car can't do. The only difference is style, electronics, and really other people's perception of you. A $50,000 car loan will cost you a little over $900 per month for 60 months. And a $25,000 car loan will cost you $450 per month over 60 months. That's a savings of over $450 a month or $5,400 per year. That's a ton of money. That brings our total save to $13,917 per year. Number 12, playing the lottery. Wasteful, wasteful, wasteful. The lottery has been described as a tax on people who are bad at math. There is some validity to that. The odds of winning the Mega Millions is roughly 1 in 302.5 million. Those are terrible odds and a horrible investment. However, your odds of being a millionaire by the age of 62 with an average financial mindset is 1 in 7. Or your odds of being a millionaire by 40 are 1 in 55 with strict financial mindset and financial discipline. I think I'll take those odds instead. If you buy two tickets per week, that will cost you $208 per year. Adding that to our total equals $14,125 per year. Number 13, not paying off your credit card every month. This is a huge waste of money. Credit cards compound interest daily. By not paying off your credit card each month, you will pay hundreds to thousands of dollars every year in interest. Don't do it. Let's say you have a balance of $3,000 on your credit card. You don't charge anymore. The minimum payment is $60 per month. Paying the minimum payment will take you 79 months or a little over six and a half years to pay the credit card off. And you'll pay $1,737 in interest. That means you are wasting $263 per year in interest on your credit cards. Don't charge what you can't afford. Only spend what you can pay off each month. If you aren't disciplined financially, don't get a credit card. That gives us a total of $14,380 per year. And that leads us to our final one. Number 14, not tracking your spending habits. Not tracking your spending habits will lead to you being clueless about how much money you're spending and where you're wasting your money. It can lead you to making some pretty poor financial decisions. One of the first videos I ever did was on the perfect budget. Check out that video. Tracking your spending is eye-opening. I've been tracking our spending since 2014. I know where we spend too much money and where to cut some of the areas we're spending. It is the single best thing you can do to reduce how much you spend every month. I challenge you to do this just for three months. You'll probably be shocked how much money you're wasting. Speaking of wasted money, our total of money wasted per year is $14,380 or almost $1,200 per month. That's insane. Imagine if you invested that savings over the next decade. That would give you $205,262.08. All you did was be wise financially by living below your means and saving. That is why I speak about that so much. Wise financial living pays huge dividends in the long run. If you're still watching this video, you probably like this video, so do me a favor and smash that like button below and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Florida Boy Finance, and like my Facebook page, also called Florida Boy Finance. 
Remember, new videos post every Tuesday, so subscribe and turn on the notifications bell to be notified every time that new video posts. Until next time, as always, remember to live below your means, save outrageously, and give generously.